No, let me say it this way. It's not that I don't want somebody else to do it for me, but I feel bad for that person who has to do it. It is Sunday, June 13th, 2021, and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, I'm gonna tell you some exciting news. Thanks for showing up here, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry that there was no Tuesday premiere this past week. I kind of missed doing it with everybody, but there was just no video. But did you watch the video I posted on Friday about all the filming locations here in Hamburg of the movie Charlie's Angels? I have to tell y'all, it was kind of, no, it wasn't kind of, it was really cool to just walk around and actually go to those places and think like, you know, Hollywood directors set up the cameras here and Kristen Stewart stood here and Elizabeth Banks was in a car there. On one hand, it made it seem a little less magical when you watch the movie and it's like in your town, you know, it's kind of harder to believe this uh, fantasy. But on the other hand, it was just really cool. And I know that's not the kind of video I usually make on this channel and it has nothing to do with cruising, but Hamburg is a cruise port. Maybe some of you will be coming here <laughs> and wanna go to those locations. I don't know. I had a good time doing it and I hope you enjoy watching it. If you haven't watched it, please go check it out. All right, I'm sure you're wondering what's going on in this video. What is it I want to announce? Uh, what is it? Why is the thumbnail so mysterious? And I figured, We've all known each other for so long and I've known Marcus longer than I've known most of you. And after a lot of careful consideration and a lot of talking about it and thinking about it and discussing it with also with some of you out there, Marcus and I, after all these years, have gone through all the paperwork, we've got it all organized, and we upgraded to the Yacht Club. <laughs> Surprise! I'm sure nobody out there thought I was really gonna say that we're getting married, right? Like I would announce that here on a Sunday sofa time. I don't know. Maybe I would. P.S. It's probably not gonna happen. We've only been together for 15 years. It's too early. All right, back to the real topic of this video, the Yacht Club. Just to catch anybody up who's maybe been missing for a couple weeks, uh, Marcus and I will be leaving on Saturday. So in like six days, we'll be flying here from our hometown of Hamburg, Italy, down to Genoa, uh, Italy. What am I saying? I'm just so excited. We will be flying from our hometown of Hamburg, Germany, down to Genoa, Italy, where we'll be staying for one night, and then on the next day, on the 20th, we are boarding the MSC Grandiosa, a ship that I just cruised on like seven months ago. And not too long ago in Sunday Sofa Time, I told you all about this cruise, and I said in that Sunday Sofa Time that we had considered staying in the Yacht Club. Marcus was interested in, in doing something a little bit special because it's been a while since he's had a, a holiday, had a vacation, and it may be a while until the next chance he gets. And of course, it was Marcus's idea and motivation for us to upgrade into that gigantic, luxurious, two-level panorama uh, patio suite on the Mindshift 2, uh, something I would have never I would have never considered doing that without his motivation. We looked at the Yacht Club and I had also toured a Yacht Club balcony deluxe suite is what they're called uh, when I was on the Grandioso because one of my friends was staying in one and I was yeah, I was a little bit disappointed just compared to this amazing suite that we were that we were in on the mine shift. I thought, okay, this is, you know, for that amount of extra money, this is really not something that special. And in that Sunday sofa time, I also discussed what the other perks are of the yacht club and that I think they're all good perks, but of those perks, the way they were described on the website and how I understood them to work, I just thought, yeah, they're nice things, but a lot of these things are things that Marcus and I are not going to be interested in in using, in, you know, they're not going to be of value to us because they're not something that are interesting to us. One major thing that, that would have been interesting to us is Yacht Club uh, members or Yacht Club stayers. How do you say it? Yacht Club passengers gain completely free access to the thermal suite on board, which was something that would have been really special, but I just checked the website again and it is closed. Actually, I don't think it says it's closed. You can still go inside, but all the saunas, all the steam rooms, and all the jacuzzis are closed, so 
What's gonna be happening in there? Oh, you know what? I just realized we also gave up our massage. <clears throat> Anyways, like I said, in that Sunday sofa time, I told you about this process that Marcus and I went through and I told him, watch the video of the suite and tell me if you think the suite itself is worth paying that much more money. And if you think it is, then we'll do it. And he watched it and like I said, Marcus who's a very matter of facty and very, thinks very logical said, yeah, probably not. Let's skip it. And that's why we decided originally to book a balcony cabin with the Aura experience on MSC. When you book a cabin that's not in the Yacht Club, you can choose from like three different packages that you get. And I'm not gonna be able to think of what they're all called right now. My brain has been on overload lately. Please forgive me. So there's like the basic package, which includes things that you would get on a normal cruise. And then there's the middle package, which is what I booked, I believe, on my last Grandiosa, or my last Grandiosa cruise. And that includes a couple upgrades like breakfast in your cabin, and I think you get a free photo, and a couple other, let's say, you know, like minor goodies. And then there's the Aurea package, which includes a lot of extras, it includes a drink package light, like a mini drink package. You get to pick your cabin, it includes a massage, and a couple other things that we thought, okay, for the price of this and a balcony cabin, compared to the price of the Yacht Club, this package includes more things that we would be interested in, and it costs less, so let's do that. And that's what I talked about in that Sunday sofa time. And then I got a lot of feedback from people about this thought process. And I can only say it again. I know I've said this before, but it's one thing that I love about doing what I do and, and you know, creating these videos is because information gets exchanged in the comments or on Facebook or in private messages and stuff uh, that not only I profit from, I profit from, but I also try to then share this information if I find it useful uh, with all of you. And it's just a really, really great thing. That's one of the things that I always try to concentrate on in these videos I make, that they should not only be entertaining, but also provide useful information, even if it's not me just like listing facts. You know what I mean? I hope I'm doing a good job. Some of these comments about my thoughts about the Yacht Club were very critical and hard to take seriously. If you've been checking Facebook, you all know what I'm talking about. And then there were some, especially some private messages that I got that really helped me sort of think about it. And I also shared it with Marcus and uh, helped him think about it as well. And two of them that I wanna talk about are from Mike and Rochelle and from Heiko. So thanks in advance to both of you or th all three of you. Uh, this is all your fault. I mean that in a good way. What's this? Has that been there the whole time? What is it? Why won't it go away? I think it's toothpaste, great. Well, I've already done half the video with it, so I'm not changing my shirt now. Can you even see it? I have known Mike and Rochelle, well, I've known Mike for even longer than I've known Rochelle, but Mike and Rochelle, I've known them for quite a while now and uh, met them a few times in Florida. They are some of the sweetest people that I've met through the very unofficial travel guides in person, and I'm always so thankful for your comments and your advice and, your goodies that uh, I get from you. I'm looking at one right up there on the shelf. Uh, hashtag Star Wars, hashtag Spork. And these two travelers have cruised in the Yacht Club several times and have tried for years <laughs> to convince me to try it out. I mean, seriously, I can't tell you how many times they've gently pushed me in the direction of the Yacht Club. And so I got a message from them after posting the video that I wanna talk about with you, and they also responded to that one sort of troll Yacht Club commoner who was very arrogant about being in the Yacht Club. Uh, so go back and watch, or go back and check out that video from last, that last Sunday sofa time, or is it two Sunday sofa times ago? Go through the comments and you'll see uh, what they wrote because they just wanted to make it clear that not everybody who's like a Yacht Club fan acts like this guy and that's good. So Mike and Rochelle just wanted to make sure again that I understood that the Yacht Club is more than just 
a bigger cabin and wrote a an extremely long and detailed list of things that they enjoy about the Yacht Club, making it clear that none of these things are things that you have to take advantage of, but it's just really cool if they're there. And some of them are, are things that I knew immediately, I am not gonna take advantage of that. And some of the things are like, okay. I'm interested. And there are things that are just not as clearly described on the website. And one of them is the fact that you can go to the bar in the Yacht Club area and basically order any drink made with any alcohol you want and in any glass you want. Could be dangerous. So like they were saying, if you want, you can go and say, I would like a Long Island iced tea and I want Tito's vodka and I want Patron tequila and I want Bombay Sapphire gin and I want you to make it in a pint glass. And the bartenders are like, my pleasure. That sounds like a huge benefit to me, especially when you consider that sometimes you have to wait quite a while for a drink in the other bars and when you consider that the Yacht Club is a much smaller uh, area and I'm assuming there's not going to be a line of people waiting at the bar, it'll just be a nice benefit to have. This is not the most important thing for me. I'm going to get to that. But it's just one thing that when I read that really sort of swayed my opinion that the drink package that you get with the Yacht Club is basically open bar, whatever you want, and however you want it. And you know, Marcus and I don't just like drink cocktails all day, but it's nice to have one when you want one. And we've really been getting into drinking a lot of wine and trying different wines. And when we're at a restaurant and try a wine that we really like, then we make a photo of the label and we order it, you know, so we can have it at home. And I would assume that some of the nicer wines on MSC are gonna be good. You know, some of the more expensive wines that I'm hoping we can get with our drink plan uh, package, the, the Yacht Club plan. So anybody out there, Mike and Rochelle, or anybody out there who's cruised in the Yacht Club, what's the deal with wines? Is there like a list of wines that are also available for the Yacht Club or can you also order any wine you want? Of course, the Yacht Club also has its own private restaurant and this is something that I know Marcus and I do not enjoy. We don't like, or we just don't enjoy going to a restaurant where it feels like somebody's hovering over, hovering over us, uh, you know, asking us constantly if everything's okay. And when they find out that I don't eat meat, you know, like fuss over it. I just, we don't enjoy that. It makes me feel more uncomfortable than it makes me feel like somebody special. Is that a bad thing? Is that something I need to talk to my therapist about? I don't know. So I think we'll probably have one meal in that fancy restaurant just to say we did it, and then we'll probably be at the buffet for most of the other meals. But here's something that I didn't know, and thanks to uh, Mike and Rochelle's list, uh, I know it now, and that is, there's basically also a buffet in the Yacht Club. So, and I don't have the facts. I should have read through the whole list again before I made the video this morning, but um, there is, like by the pool, uh, like a buffet of snacks. And I think I remember, I'm sorry, I should have read this, but I think that the breakfast in the main Yacht Club restaurant is also a buffet. And so hearing that also, of course, was all of a sudden very interesting to me. There's another thing that I know Marcus is going to be really happy about, uh, and it's something that he mentioned, and that is the priority embarkation and disembarkation, meaning that you like have a separate check-in area and you are like whisked onto the ship. And that's something that Marcus said that he thinks is really cool, so that will be cool to have. And there's a part of the first day and last day service that's provided in the Yacht Club that just seems weird to me. And I feel like I have to try it even though it makes me very uncomfortable. And I'm gonna tell you about it right after this commercial break. Did you get one? What was it about? Write it in the comments below. Or just say yes, I got an ad. All right, so one of the things that uh, Mike and Michelle listed that they use part of is, if you want your butler AKA cabin steward will unpack your suitcase for you and put it in the closet and drawers. And at the end of the cruise, they will pack it all up for you again and put it in your suitcase. You know, 
Is it cool? I can't decide. I can't decide about that. I mean, as far as like shirts and pants go, of course, big deal. But it's like, it just seems weird to me that it's somebody's job to unpack people's underwear and socks. And then at the end of the cruise, they will pack it up again. The dirty clothes, you know, it's something I'd like to take advantage of because of course, Packing up your stuff at the end of the cruise, that sucks. That's like such a major bummer on the last day, not only because it takes time and and of course always your clothes somehow grow and you can never fit them back into the suitcase, but I don't know if I want somebody else to do that for me. You know, no, let me say it this way. It's not that I don't want somebody else to do it for me, but I feel bad for that person who has to do it. Does that make sense? You know, I know it's their job and I'm sure they do it all the time. And so it's not like we're the only people who would be taking advantage of the service. It's offered, so I'm sure a lot of people do it. But I just, I don't know. I just feel for these people who I'm sure this is not the happiest part of their job, but I feel like I just have to try it out so I can tell you all what it was like. So what do you think? Should I let them, like unpacking the clothes, I'll be fine with that. It's the packing up the clothes at the end that I'm like, I don't know, that's just kind of weird. Should I let them pack up the clothes at the end or not? I'm wondering what Marcus will do. What do you think Marcus will do? Okay, there's one major point that I didn't really think about and this, reading this, after I read the whole list from Mike and Rochelle, reading this comment from Heiko really was one of the things that I thought, okay, if we have the opportunity to upgrade now, I want to do it. And that is that it's like the beginning of summer vacation in Italy, and this ship is going to be filled with children. And you know, from my last Grandiosa cruise, that the Italian people on the pool deck the word quiet and relaxing, that's not, that's not what it's like. The Grandiosa was the loudest cruise ship I have ever experienced. Starting with morning stretching at like, I don't know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning until dinner time, there is painfully loud techno music blasting across the entire pool deck and then all the passengers are talking even louder so they can you know, hear each other. So it's like a really vibrant, energetic, loud, so loud atmosphere on the main pool deck, in the indoor pool area, and at the smaller, what kind of adults only pool at the very back of the ship as well. Also always music playing and people talking loudly. And here's something else I'm interested in. So any of my yacht clubbers out there in the pool area, in the yacht club, do they play music there too? Gosh, I hope not. And if they do, I hope it's really like chill music and not the techno remix of Born This Way. Nothing against Lady Gaga, but I just have my limits, you know? So just thinking of how loud it was on my last cruise, which was definitely not in vacation, so school holiday period, there were not a lot of families on the ship. And I just thought, oh my gosh. This is going to be crazy. So considering that the Yacht Club has its own private areas, private sun deck, private mini pool area, I thought that is gonna be a huge benefit. And that was the, like the deal breaker or the deal sealer for me. So that's gonna be probably the thing that I'm gonna take advantage of the most. And so if you're wondering how all this upgrade happened, uh, it was also kind of a stressful process as part of something else. And that is at the moment, MSC basically requires passengers to have an extra travel insurance policy to cover your expenses if you are, if you contract COVID on the ship, if you have to be quarantined, and if you have to, you know, fly home in the middle of the cruise or whatever, they highly recommend and actually require some passengers to have this policy in place. And haha, <laughs> we don't. When we booked the cruise, there was an offer for 
you know, they work together with a company and they say, you can either take this one or you can find any one of your choice. And I thought, okay, the easiest thing is going to be to just take this one. So it says, write a mail to this address to tell them that you booked your cruise and they will send you an offer. And I did that. We booked the cruise on a Friday evening and the next business day, which was Monday, Monday morning, after we had gotten our confirmation over the weekend that we were booked and everything went through, Monday morning, I wrote a mail to that address saying, give us the package and you know what? Nobody answered, did not get an answer. I was just assuming, okay, well, it's just gonna take them a while to reply and that's why you know, I, I just kind of let it pass out of my mind, actually. Fast forward to a couple days ago, and I still didn't have an answer, and I read again, you know, depending on who you are and where you book this cruise, you may be required to have this package in place. So I got in touch with my sort of VIP contact at MSC to let him know I'm a little bit worried because I... I still haven't gotten a reply to my request for an offer for this insurance. We're leaving in like a week, so can we please get that taken care of? And then I got the answer that it's too late to book that. We had to book it within, I think, three days of booking the cruise if we booked the cruise within 60 days of departure, which we definitely did. And I was like, oh. Well, that's funny because I wrote a mail within three days of booking the cruise and nobody answered. So it was a little bit traumatic. I did get a little bit sassy. And uh, yeah, the way it worked out is they said, you know, yeah, unfortunately something went wrong there, but don't worry. You will still be allowed to cruise, but you just need to know in advance that if you are required to leave the ship, it's going to be on your own cost, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, just a little bit of advice there. It's something I learned that if you want to book any kind of travel insurance for a cruise, for a flight, for any kind of trip, I've learned now that you basically have to book it at the same time you book your trip. You can't book the trip and then wait a couple of weeks and then book the insurance. Doesn't work that way, not allowed, unless the trip is several months or years or whatever in the future. So there's some more useful information from me making mistakes. Actually, no, I didn't make a mistake. I just had to deal with some delayed service. Hey everybody, it's Morgan from the future. I'm sitting here editing this together and I realized at this moment that I never actually got to the point. Surprise. And the thing is, it was through this conversation I started then with the representative at MSC about the whole travel insurance thing and not getting a reply, that in that conversation, I also asked, by the way, we're also interested in if there's a possibility to upgrade to Yacht Club, we'd like to do that. So I wanna say it's kind of thanks to the whole insurance fiasco that the conversation started that led to the upgrade, but otherwise we would have asked about an upgrade when we got on the ship. That's the point I was trying to make. Back to the video. So curious to hear what your thoughts are about all this and uh, what your thoughts are about MSC saying, good idea to have this, write to this address, me writing to this address, not getting an answer, and them saying, oops, too late, you don't really need it. Okay. And now will come the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. Last week's Sunday Sofa Time was another live stream. I had a great time doing it, had very few technical problems, so things are going well. And we talked about um, some snafus in the last day of my cruise on the Aida Perla, where they messed up the passport number on this document that I needed, and then also the whole thing in the bus with the grumpy old man. Anyways, these comments are about our about the stuff we talked about in that video. And the first one I wanna read is from Sherry McGregor Robertson. Uh, Sherry writes, we like the idea of cocktail cams just to hear your thoughts on the day. So if you don't know it already, this cruise that I'm going to be doing on the Grandiosa that I just talked about for 20 minutes with Marcus is going to be like a real vacation. I'm going to try to film almost nothing and just experience it as a normal vacationer and just have 
quality couple time with Marcus, but you know, now that we're going to be in the yacht club, I definitely will have a lot that I want to tell you. So even if I don't film it on the ship, when I get back, there's going to be a lot of sofa time, story time style videos to let you know what the experience was like. And I'm gonna try to do some cocktail cams because I think that will be the least like time consuming and the least, uh, you know, distracting. So look forward to those coming up. And thanks for that feedback, Sherry. Next comment is from Sec2000 Transu. Uh, <laughs> they write, oh my God, I'm dead. Sitting at work watching this and you telling the bus story has me laughing so hard, you are too funny. And I wrote back, did you practice the dirty look with me, LOL? And Sue wrote, yes, the third time I watched it. So if you don't know what the whole dirty look thing is, go back and watch the live stream. Morgan got a little sassy. I'm glad I could brighten up your day at work, Sue, and uh, I won't tell your boss that you're watching YouTube. Next comment is from Lou Mello, something that I, I really agree with here and I wanna talk about it. I'm gonna jump in at the middle and we're talking about how it's not really productive to be rude and mean and loud to somebody at the front desk because they're usually not responsible for the problem, but they are the person who can offer a solution, so that's who you need to be nice to. Lou says here, basically, go to the person that has the best understanding of what the problem is and is most able to fix it. For example, a cabin problem, go to the cabin steward. For a dining problem, either the waiter or the assistant maitre d' uh, who will be most able to help. Of course, that would have not solved your problem, my problem with the test and the passport problem you did everything right and yeah i just want to remind everybody again that things do go wrong on a holiday on vacation when you're traveling people make mistakes people who you know work in these places make mistakes and of course there's also bad eggs you know people who come to work and are just like over it and don't want to do a good job can always happen and just remember that try to stay as calm and as polite and as nice as possible when you're dealing with the person who will perhaps have a solution for you. And remember, complaining and getting loud and uncomfortable, in my opinion, should never be rewarded. As far as I'm concerned, if somebody's screaming and pounding their fists on the desk, no matter what happens, bye bye You know what I mean? Thanks for spending this part of the day with me. Next Sunday, I will be boarding the MSC Grandiosa, if everything goes as planned. It's crazy times, you know? I'm still not so sure it's gonna happen. But I'm gonna do my best to have some videos ready and uploaded for you before I leave. And as soon as I get back, I've got one day of turnaround here at home, and then I'm flying to Minnesota to visit my family and I'll be out on the west coast as well to visit my family and it's gonna be yeah, a crazy few weeks coming up but I will be checking in there will be things appearing on this channel and on my other channel and on my Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. so make sure you check out all those things and I'm so looking forward to getting back after all that's done and having so much to share with you so see you very soon